everyone and welcome to my channel. I know it's winter now and at the moment in Russia where I live it's quite cold and there's a lot of snow so no garden works at the moment. But I know that not everyone has such cold winters and a lot of people have some work in their gardens to do so I think it's just the time to think of garden embellishments. Today I want to show you some of my older videos about how I made cement houses for the garden. I hope you love them. So let's get started. Any concrete or cement project begins with making a mold for it. To make the molds I'm using styroform glue up ceiling tiles. You can find them at a hardware store and they are super cheap, easy to work with and have a nice smooth surface which is great for making molds. Here you want to choose plain tiles without any pattern. I begin with the front side of the house. I'm drawing a house just like kids do with a triangular roof and cutting this simple shade out with a box knife. I'm outlining the sketch right on the tile without using any templates. I'm cutting out two parts like this. I'll make the mold out of two layers of tile to make it more sturdy. Next, I'm drawing and cutting out windows and doors. I'm making quite small windows here so that the inside of the house wasn't very visible through them as it's not going to be very nice. After I've cut out all the windows, I'm hot gluing two parts together. The second part has no windows and is a little longer because I want to make a small border along the bottom of the house. Next I'll make the sides of the mold. I'm cutting strips about an inch wide and then I'm hot gluing these sides along the perimeter of the house, cutting off the excess length. After the contour is ready, I'm adding the second layer from the outside. Here I'm trying to place the second strip so that the junctions of the pieces on the layers do not match to avoid leaks later. Next I'm going to fill the windows. To get holes in a concrete cast you need to add 3D elements on a mold. So I'm making blocks by cutting a lot of rectangles of the required size, attaching 4 to 5 rectangles together and hot gluing these blocks into the holes that I've cut out at the very beginning. I'm also covering the outside of the mold with sticky tape, again to avoid any leaks. Concrete can be very leaky, you know. The first mold is ready. I'll need two parts like this. Here I've made a door as well. The house needs two more walls and I'll make them the same way, but having a rectangular or a square shape. The height of the rectangle or square should be the same as the height of the front part. And you can make any width you like. Just like in the beginning, I'm cutting out two pieces, one with windows, the second one without any, hot gluing them together attaching the sides, gluing in the blocks for the windows and finally covering the outside with sticky tape. You can make different houses like this, even having quite intricate shapes out of several models. The only thing is do not forget to take into account the thickness of the walls. If you make a square mold, the house will be rectangular, as about an inch will be added to each side for the thickness of the fronts. To get a square house, you want to make side walls narrower. In order to know what you'll get in the end, just attach the molds together and you will see what kind of house you are going to build. Since the walls of the house will be quite thin, I want to reinforce them. You can use wire to make the concrete stronger and I'll use chicken wire which I have on hand. I'm cutting pieces according to the shape of the houses with a little extra and making cuts where the windows and the doors will be. So, the fuss with the molds is over and actually I've finished the hardest part of the work. Now I'll mix the cement. I'm adding a tablespoon of white glue to the water for each kilo of dried cement for extra strength. Then I'm adding the cement and mixing everything well. I'm using a cement mixer here, which is easier, but you can also mix it with hands and a hand tool. 
I'm filling the mold to about halfway and knocking it well on the table to get rid of any air bubbles. Then I'm placing the wire frame into the mold, pressing it a little into the cement and filling the mold completely. And I'm knocking it a bit more on the table. I'm filling all the molds like so. Next you want to place your nice molds somewhere where you can be sure they will not be in somebody's way and nobody gets into them by chance, as they need to sit there for about at least a week for the cement to gain strength. It's also important to keep the molds horizontally, otherwise the cement will flow to one side and the walls will be of uneven thickness. It takes about three weeks to fully cure, but I certainly do not have the patience to wait for so long. Well, a week has passed, the cement has hardened and now I'll take the karsts out of the molds. Here you can see I've had to break the window blocks in order to take out the casts. I've covered the window blocks in masking tape and they do not come out easily after this, but the casts get very neat and even with tape covered blocks in molds. Actually, I've reused these molds to make several houses out of the same molds. I've just hot glued these blocks back after I took out the casts. I used some old cement mixture, which I had on hand for the very first casts, and sadly these casts cracked and I had to buy fresh cement and repeat everything and this second batch is perfect without a single crack. So always use fresh cement for your projects, it makes a big difference. To assemble the houses I'll be using tile mortar, you can also mix the same cement which you used for making casts. I'm mixing it with water to get the texture of thick sew cream. Then I'm applying the mortar to the sides of the front part and attaching the side walls to it. Then I'm applying the mortar over the back part and assembling the whole house. After that I'm removing the excess mortar from the outside and adding some extra on the inside to reinforce the joints. Actually this resembles gingerbread house assembling very much. Please don't forget to wear gloves while you work with cement mixtures, it's really harsh for skin. If a seam has appeared anywhere or there's a crack on a house, I'm applying more mortar on the walls and smoothing it gently. And after that I'm leaving the houses to sit for a few more days until everything cures well. After they are fully dry I'm sanding the houses. Since the molds were well done, there's not much sanding needed, just the seams and a couple of places where I covered the cracks on the houses. I'm using a sanding sponge with 180 grit. Here one house has got a tenant already, but the spider fled away quickly. It was too dusty and too noisy a house for him. Since my houses will sit outside and I'm going to plant flowers into them, this means constant moisture, so I've decided I needed to protect the concrete. I came across a special water repellent sealer in a store and I've decided to try it. It penetrates into concrete to about 15 mm and makes a hydrophobic coating so water rolls off concrete and doesn't alter surface appearance. Also it doesn't leave surface film, which I like. I'm applying the sealer with a brush in two or three layers as per instructions. I'm covering both the outside and the inside of the houses, trying to avoid any drips. After all the houses are treated, I'm leaving them to dry, and meanwhile I'll make the roofs and the bases. I've decided to make wooden roofs and foundations for the houses. By the way, you can also cast them out of concrete. 
I'm going to use smaller houses as garden lanterns so the roofs will be solid. I'm using a piece of wood board laying around for this. I'm making the foundation of the house about half an inch bigger than the house base itself. The roof is also about an inch wider than the house. After all the parts are ready, I'm sanding them lightly to round off all the edges and corners a little. To make the roofs, I've made two parts, one part wider and the other one a bit narrower, and I'm simply gluing these two parts together. Here I'm using waterproof wood glue. The bigger houses will have flower roofs. I'm using chicken wire here and cutting out a piece a little larger than the roof. Then I'm bending this piece in the shape of the roof and cutting out the squares in the corners to be able to make a kind of a wire basket. I'm bending the wire edges to get something like the letter W. I'm cutting off the excess wire on these sides and the base for the flower basket is ready. Next I'll make the roof frame. I'm going to be cutting the frame out of a plank of 1 by 1 inches. For the top of the roof I'm cutting the slats at 45 degrees to make a nice joint. I'll need 4 pieces like this. And I'm cutting two more pieces with straight edges for the sides. I'm sanding the pieces slightly and will be assembling the frame. First I'm assembling the front parts. After drying I'm attaching the side parts to them. Here a certain balancing act will be required since everything falls apart easily and in order to hold everything better tighten the parts with clamps or at least support it with something until it dries. After the wooden parts have dried I'm staining them. Here I'm using oak stain and then I'm covering them with an outdoor sealer. Now I'm going to assemble the houses. I'm attaching the foundations to the houses using heavy duty mounting glue. I'm not attaching the roofs, but just put the roofs on top so that I'll be able to get inside to put fairy lights there. To finish the flower roof, first I'm attaching the wire basket to the wooden frame from the inside using a stapler. Next, I'm taking flower basket coconut liners from a Dollar Tree, I'm cutting it in half, straightening it a little, placing the liner into the wire basket and cutting off the excess. All that is left is to plant flowers inside. Here best is to use the plants that tolerate a small amount of soil and frequent drought, that is the rock garden plants, like sexy freaks, all kinds of succulents, stone crops and the like. I've planted alisum in one house and stone roses into the other one. I'm filling all the gaps with soil and we're done. You can also just put a flower pot inside such a house. So I've got the whole little village here, the houses look incredibly cute and make a wonderful garden, terrace, balcony or even just a window sill decorations. The best thing is that such houses can be made in absolutely any size and any shape. I think a very cool option if you don't want to make a wooden roof is to make Dutch canal houses with nice curved fronts. Maybe I'll try to make these the next year. So I hope you liked my cement houses and I hope I brought some spring mood to you with this video. Please let me know what you think of it down below. Thanks for watching the video and hope to see you in the next one. Bye!